Hi, I'm Chris Goodman, and I'm an UltraX Ace and Innovator. And I'm Joshua Burkow, also an UltraX Ace and Innovator. Welcome to UltraTrix. Hi, I'm Chris, and I'm going to take you through an example of making the workflow more dynamic and also showing you a design pattern that's very similar to an index match in Excel, if you're familiar with that. So taking a look at the um, workflow, what we've got is an input file here, and we can see in the input file by looking at the browse, we've got some fields here, so we've got ID, IDs, we've got uh, people's names, their email address, gender, IP address, and the country. And what we're doing is we're using a tile tool, and we've got the tile tool configured to take the unique value and the unique value comes from the column country, then we're using that to um, output into um, a separate file, and then um, using a select tool just to remove those tile numbers because we don't need them, um, and then exporting that into an Excel file where each country is its own tab. Um, now, this workflow isn't dynamic, in that if we change this input file, and I'll go to this one, we can see here in the preview, we've got some data that's very different. The headers are very different. We've got car makes as opposed to people um, data. So this workflow will fail because it basically get errors because there is no country information um, for it to do the tile on and then this formula tool here where we're doing an output and then we're saying the country name becomes the sheet. We don't have country, so this will fail. Um, so what we want to do is have a way of making this workflow dynamic. What we would do to do that is we'll bring in um, some interface tools. So these sit on um, the tool palette for interface and we'll build an analytic app out of this. So first of all, we want to browse for a file and allow the user to do that. I'll just build this out quickly. Um, we'll do other demos on how to build apps, but what we want it to do is input the data tool. We'll name this just a file browse. So that enables the user to browse through a file. And then we want to have a list box and I won't want that connecting in initially. We'll connect the list box in. Um, I'll just delete that automatic anchor that is pulled in or that um, line. And here we want to now change this to update a value. And the value that we want to do is the country and we'll replace that specific string. And then here we'll bring the queue anchor into what looks like an at symbol into this tool, which then configures the list box to be um, based on the file or the field names that are coming in from that new file. So we'll just change this to choose field to group by and then if we take a look at this in our analytic preview we can browse for a file so we're taking that um, second version of the file open that I want, I want this actually to be a drop down box as opposed to a checkbox. Um, so, drop down, but the configuration is exactly the same. Bring that in. And if we go to here, we're bringing this window here, search for the file. Take our mock data, bring that in, and then we've got a drop down, and that enables us to pick the years. And if we go back to the original data set, take that one, bring that one in, we can see that you've got first name, gender, country that you want to group by. So I'll just cancel out of that, and just to make this a bit clearer on the interface, we'll just name this again. So 
that deals with um, making the first part of this workflow dynamic. But what we've got is we want to output um, in the file name, the sheet or the tab within that worksheet um, based on the parameter that we bring in. So to do that, we need to um, add a few more features. So the first thing we want to do is bring in a record ID. We bring this in at the front because we're going to have to branch off this workflow and we need something to join on later on. And just in case the data set has another field in it called record ID, I'm just going to put two underscores at the front of that. Um, and then we can come down and we can use a dynamic select. Put this dynamic select down here. And we now want to select our fields based on a formula. And what we do is we say the, the field the field name, so I'll just show you it in here, is either equal to the record ID, which we've just created. So that's underscore underscore record ID. I think it's uppercase ID. Just check. I'll just copy it out of here to make it consistent. or we want the name to be equal to um, what is coming in from this tool here. So we'll just bring this tool in, and connect that up, and you can see that it's now got this connection number one, and we can select that in here so we can say connect to some questions and bring this in. Once we've done that, we know this tool is going to only bring in um, the two values one is the record ID that we've created and select only the field um, which matches what we have in the drop down. Then we bring in a join tool. Just connect this in here. I'll just move all of this along a little bit. And what we want the join to do is bring you in join on the record ID, um, which is in both sides, but not bring through our duplicate record ID. And we know there's always gonna be a field called record ID coming in because we've got that in the dynamic select. And then also bring in our unknown fields. So it's important that we leave this unchecked, but we know this will only ever bring in um, the selected field because that's how we've got the dynamic select um, configured. And then we want to bring in a dynamic rename. And here we want to do it rename by formula. We want to select all fields. And what you'll see here is it's got dynamic or unknown fields. And what we want to do is in our expression here is if starts with, and then we want to bring in our current field And then we want to say it starts with essentially write underscore. So this is the um, prefix that the join tool will add in. If that condition is true, then we want to rename that field underscore underscore suffix. So we add that onto the end. Else just keep um, the current field name and then we'll end this. And then when we come into here, instead of having country, we know we can bring in um, this newly created field, which is underscore underscore suffix. So that's what we want it to do. It's going to error in this configuration because we haven't passed through um, a field that matches that condition in this uh, dynamic rename. It doesn't know it exists, so it will always error. But if we go into the analytic app mode, um, we can see that working. So I'm going to go to Interface Designer. Um, if you don't know how to get to Interface Designer, you go View, Interface Designer. And then we can look at um, a configuration here. So we browse for our file. So I'll bring in the car data. 
just to kind of show you that um, it's all working. We'll bring that in and we'll group by our car make and then we'll open up the debug mode. And then if we run this workflow, we can see now that it's output in files where the tab name matches the make of the car being generated. I don't need to run this all the way to the end. And I'll just stop it. And that's essentially the design pattern there. It's, it's picking up that I chose car make. It's creating a new field called suffix here and it's replicating that field across. And if I changed it for something else, and um, it would work exactly the same. And just to kind of show you how that works and translate that into Excel language, I'm gonna bring up um, an example workbook. So here, um, we've got the same data in columns E to J. We've got the ID, car mate, model, model year, color, and vehicle identification number. But what we've got is a list here, which matches the fields. So I can select any other essentially field that I want to group by. And so this replicates what's in the interface tool. So I want to do model year. And what we can see is I've got this formula here, which is a match formula. So it's matching in this array, which column is um, the model year appearing. So we can see that's appearing in column four. And then we've got a calculation over here, which is doing the index of all of our data and then returning the row, which comes from the ID value and the column, which we've got selected here, which is the dynamic element of it. And that brings that down. So if we change this to something else, so at the moment we've got model years and we can see the model years in here. If I change that to car make, you can see that's changing. So that's what we're doing in Alteryx. And that's what the design pattern um, I want to show you is, is essentially this part here, um, select all the right tools. That's the design pattern. So we're creating a record ID, we're tiling, but then we're dynamically selecting a particular field, which we dynamically want to update using the user interface. So I'll go back to here and we can see this. So we've got this drop down, and this is controlling how this performs. And that's how you take your workflows to the next level and make them dynamic and be able to adjust irrespective of what the underlying data is doing. But you've got that same design pattern where you're wanting to segment your data into particular groups and then output, export it as a file. Thank you for watching. Click here to subscribe and click here to watch more videos.